For more, let's speak to our Brussels correspondent, Dave Keating. Uh, Dave, take us through exactly what the EU had agreed upon last night. Well, this is what it boils down to. April 12th is the new March 29th. We, the UK has been given three weeks to approve May's withdrawal deal. Now, this was not how things were supposed to go last night, and that's why it took so long. Going into the meeting, uh, President Tusk had drafted a text that said that the UK could get up until May 22nd, but only if the UK Parliament approved Theresa May's withdrawal deal. But then what happened is Theresa May spent 90 minutes in a Q&A with the other EU leaders in which they grilled her on what the chances were of that deal passing next week and what her plan was to try to get it over the line. And her answers, we're told, were so vague and so evasive that the 27 EU leaders completely lost confidence in any possibility of that vote passing next week. And so after Theresa May left the room, they were left scrambling to come up with a plan B. And everyone had different ideas. So during the course of the night, we were hearing all kinds of dates being thrown out. It seemed like every 15 minutes there was a new date. Uh, but finally, around midnight, this is what they settled on. So essentially, that uh, unconditional Brexit extension until April 12th, that gives the parliament three weeks from now to approve May's deal. If they do approve it, then they get another technical extension until May 22nd, that is right before the European Parliament elections, to kind of uh, dot the I's, cross the T's, and implement that decision. If they don't approve the deal, either they vote it down or perhaps the Speaker of the House in the UK doesn't allow it to come to a vote, then, Donald Tusk said last night at his press conference, the UK has three options. It can accept a no-deal Brexit, on the 12th of April, uh, which could be potentially calamitous, uh, it could decide to revoke Article 50, that is, revoke its decision to withdraw from the EU, or it can ask for a long-term extension. But that long-term extension comes with conditions. Notably, the UK would have to run a European Parliament election in May, and something needs to materially change in that long term. Uh, now, Tusk wouldn't come out and say it, but what really would need to change is a change in government, that is a new general election, or a second referendum. So those are the options facing the UK. We'll see how the UK Parliament responds to this new set of circumstances next week. I'm told uh, it might be tempting to think that there's going to be a new emergency summit on April uh, 12th. After all, that was the whole reason they did this, because there was concern that inevitably Theresa May's withdrawal deal was going to be voted down next week, and we were looking at an emergency summit being called next Thursday at the last minute. Nobody wanted that, and that's why they implemented this new plan. But the idea is not to put off an emergency summit until April 12th. I've been told uh, by several EU sources that if the UK Parliament doesn't approve May's deal next week, that's it. Then it's time to start preparing for those other scenarios uh, that the EU, EU will not countenance a new emergency summit because in the EU's view, it has done all it can. There's nothing more to discuss. That being said, I think if it looks like the UK is drifting toward an accidental no deal on April 12th, we would probably see another emergency summit. And Dave, Brexit uncertainty dominating the agenda on Thursday. Friday, the EU expected to look at the bloc's relationship with China. Why is this getting so much attention? Yeah, this is a good example of why EU leaders are so frustrated with Brexit. Because last night, over dinner, they were supposed to discuss the EU's relationship with China. But that discussion had to be put off until today because the Brexit discussions had to continue during the dinner. Uh, so what this discussion today is going to be is a general uh, discussion over how the EU should position itself vis-a-vis -vis China. Is China a friend or a foe? In what areas should the EU protect itself from China? And in what areas should it cooperate? And Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte will be kind of 
in the limelight or in the crosshairs of that discussion because his government is set to become the first European government to take part in China's Belt and Road Initiative that is having China invest significantly in Italian infrastructure. And that has people very concerned. So that's probably going to be quite a robust discussion today. And the uh, outcome of today's discussion will be a, an EU positioning ahead of an EU-China summit that's set to take place at the beginning of April. What the EU leaders have to adopt today is what the EU's position is for that EU-China summit. And the hope is to get something very detailed, very forward-looking, uh, that would really make clear how the EU views China, how it wants to cooperate, and how it wants to defend itself. Uh, that being said, uh, having Giuseppe Conte in the room uh, may make uh, may, having such clear conclusions difficult today. All right. Thank you very much, Dave. Dave Keating reporting from Brussels. Now, it's been 